Assalamualaikum and welcome to lesson 7 of my video presentation on problem based learning. <coughs> I'm uh, Hussein Osman, a PBR practitioner. As promised in the previous video, this lesson is going to be a discussion on uh, comparison between problem based learning and case based learning or CBL. Problem-based learning and case-based learning are among the most effective student-centered and inquiry-based learning strategies practiced at institutions of higher learning. CBL in medical education can be traced back at least to 1912 when it was first used by a Scottish Dr. James Lauren Smith while teaching pathology at the University of Edinburgh. In many other forms, uh, CBL had also taken a center stage in curriculum delivery in other discipline areas. In medical education, there are varieties of definition on CBL. McLean uh, 2016 uh, summarizes the definition as a learning approach consists of a clinical case, some kind of inquiry on the part of the learner which is all of the information to be learned is not presented at first. Uh, enough information presented so that there is not too much time spent learning basics and uh, a faculty teaching and guiding the discussion, ensuring that learning objectives are met. For many decades since early 1900, CBL had been uh, used by medical educators before PBL was first introduced uh, at Case Western Reserve University, uh, Ohio in the 1950s and McMaster University in Canada in the 1970s. And uh, since then, many medical schools begin to move towards PBL. CBL, however, still shows a strong presence in some institutions. By the early 21st century, PBL and CBL become among the main delivery methods at medical schools uh, throughout the world. At some points, uh, these two methods had to compete with each other to get the main spot in the medical curriculum. And uh, since then, uh, studies on both methods continue to surge. At one level, PBL was seen as uh, the main rival to CBL at another level as its counterpart. In some medical schools, a decade-long implementation of PBL was replaced entirely with a CBL. The reverse decisions, however, are not because of the complex nature of PBL, rather the demand from students and faculty members because of its extremely demanding and challenging learning method. In 2002, a medical school in the United States decided to switch from PBL to CBL after facing with the problems of recruiting PBL faculty and faculty acceptance of students' interaction and also assessment issues. Faculty had to be trained to teach in PBL, which was time-consuming and interfered with the process of learning by students. Some faculty felt that the teachers should determine the learner's needs and not vice versa. The PBL assessment tools were novel and not immediately accepted by the faculty. Other medical schools also noted similar problems with PBL and found that the method is extremely learner-centered. Learning objectives are essentially generated by the students, making faculty control over learning difficult. A comparative study on PBL and CBL at two medical schools in California, United States, reported in 2007, found that 89% of the students and 84% of faculty preferred CBL over PBL. Among the reasons for the preference were fewer unfocused tangents, less busy work, and more opportunities for clinical skills application. Some other studies had also reported the problems with PBL and how CBL could be the best option for the replacement. Again, the findings do not pointing towards the weakest points of PBL, rather the strongest points where the issues are not about the method but the incapability of the students to adapt to PBL and the faculty to supervise and facilitate the learning. 
The students were complaining about the time-consuming workloads and inability to cope with many uncertainties during learning. The faculty were complaining uh, about the higher level of learner-centered and how they could not easily control the learning direction due to free inquiry nature of PBL as compared to guided inquiry in CBL. There is no secret anymore that in medical studies, PBL is more challenging than CBL. In terms of goals, PBL is designed to let students learn problem solving, information gathering, clinical reasoning and collaboration. The focus is on how to go about solving the problem presented, not as much what the content of the problem. It is a process learning activity. CBL, on the other hand, is designed to let students learn about clinical cases, diagnosis and management, and problem solving is often required but students may be aided by the faculty. In terms of focus, PBL is focusing on problem solving, whereas CBL is focusing on clinical-based knowledge, how to solve a specific problems in the profession or manage and identify problems or diseases. PBL requires less advanced study as compared to CBL. In PBL, information is often researched during the case. Advanced study, however, is required in CBL, where students should have the baseline knowledge imparted before the CBL session. In PBL, learners are active participants in the learning process and they are expected to ask questions and explore the topic during the session. In CBL, learners are expected to participate However, they have to make an advanced preparation before the session, ask some questions directly related to cases. In PBL, teachers provide case or problem scenario and expected not to interfere with students' interests. They are expected to observe not too much guidance. In CBL, teachers provide case or cases and expected to guide discussion or if written or online, guide content so that specific learning objectives are met keeps discussion on track without allowing much tangential discussion and also to ensure the correct answer are known. Recent trend of uh, medical students towards a PBL is uh, slightly changing. A study conducted by Said Uzair uh, and others in uh, 2016 found that 84% uh, of medical students preferred PBL over CBL. They admit that PBL is more challenging, but in comparison with CBL, PBL is highly effective in assisting them to identify gaps in knowledge, improve their areas of weakness, manage time, and make decisions, solve problems, use critical reasoning skills, and communicate with each other. Students, however, did not rule out the importance of CBL. They are looking for a medical education system where both PBL and CBL are the main parts of the curriculum. CBL should be introduced to early years and followed by PBL at the senior years until graduation. CBL is a good start for students before they could be able to handle the most complex challenges in open learning and query provided by PBL. In other discipline areas, uh, including business, management, law and legal studies, case-based learning is also getting a special spot in the curriculum. In business and management, it was known as case study, a learning approach developed in the early 1920s at Harvard Business School. Today, Harvard case study is among the most treasured learning method in business and management. In Harvard case study, students are the center of learning. They are responsible for their learning direction by interacting with each other and learn from real-world examples. Learning activities include interviews with executives, industry leaders, and small business owners to get valuable examples of business concepts in action. These interviews represent the cases they should be studying and relying on, not the textbooks. In legal practice, the judges have to enforce the law and to pass the judgment based on the existing laws. Similar to other legal affairs such as prosecutors and defense counsel, they also work and carry out tasks within the scope determined by the Legal Standard Operating Procedure or SOP. It was because of this that law and legal studies have to depend heavily on case-based learning, often referred to as legal inquiry-based learning or case team meeting. 
in criminal case, for example, the prosecutor prepare the prosecution case and advocate then will defend the client and the judge uh, will pass the judgment all within within the existing laws and the preceding cases. However, if there is a unique and unusual criminal case or the crime committed so neatly designed to escape the law, then it is likely the criminals will be freed even before the trial begin in the court. This situation might trigger legal educators to look further at PBL as a complement for case-based learning. Many law schools today had improved the teaching and learning method by introducing PBL. They do not solely depend on the CBL as legal problems had already gone beyond the existing laws and the preceding cases. Students at law schools studied cases using CBL in the early years and then moved to PBL in the senior years. One of the law schools in the United Kingdom applied PBL in its study program as they believe PBL could be able to enhance a student's skills to acquire principles and key legal concepts that should be better retained by the learners and allow them to use information learned in other similar situations. PBL also develops students' legal reasoning skills, critical thinking and decision-making strategies as well as skills in integrating knowledge across disciplines and deepens understanding of the role of law and society. In summary, a clear distinction between a CBL and PBL is the format of the inquiry process. CBL is using a guided inquiry process, where, whereas PBL, the open inquiry process. In CBL, the problem-solving method is provided. The standard processes and procedures were already designated. Students should follow the existing standard operational procedure uh, throughout the learning. Whereas in PBL, the problem-solving method is not provided. Instead, students need to identify through the diagnostic process and self-directed learning exploration. PBL is more powerful in solving new and unfamiliar problems. The CBL approach does not properly apply to be all new problems that previously never existed or to the existing uh, problems that already transform into more complex and difficult to understand. I hope this uh, short presentation had done justice to both uh, PBL and CBL. My intention is not to rank or rate any of these important learning approaches, uh, rather show us uh, some essential characteristic that could be considered uh, useful for our teaching and learning strategy. Educators should not choose the learning method based on the ranking or rating. We should look at our own needs and requirements as well as the students and the curriculum as a whole. Thank you very much for your time and attention to my presentation. Uh, viewers who are new here, please uh, subscribe to my channel so you'll get more notification on my upcoming uh, videos. And don't forget to like and share this video. Your kind support is uh, highly appreciated. If you have something to share, uh, please leave the comment below. Have a great day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.